Let's go to Edinburgh uh, and uh, speak with Kinshasa-born human rights attorney Deborah Kayembe, rector at the University uh, of Edinburgh. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you for having me. Uh, when the Pope talks about an amnesty of the heart and mutual forgiveness between Congolese, how much do those words carry? How much do they resonate? I think it's the first time um, Congo, these people have, have been called to think about reconciliation. And I think it's going to be very difficult for the Congolese to go straight to a reconciliation right now. But I think it's a good thing that the, the, the Pope set, set the tone. We need to consider reconciliation, although there's still a huge amount of justice that needs to be done and a huge amount of storytelling needs to be done. But we need to think about reconciliation. It's heavy. It's very important. I'm not too sure whether the Congolese are going to be open to it straight away. Uh, you heard uh, Sima Gupta, our correspondent in Kinshasa, to, to talk about it, just how important the Catholic Church is and was the last time uh, there was an election there, um, basically also running a lot of the social services. Uh, that role of the Catholic Church, is it waxing or waning? It's still winning. The Catholic Church is very influent in political life in DRC, and it's still very much the biggest um, uh, church in DRC, maybe the, the biggest Christian community in whole Africa. So it's, it's very, it's, it's true that Catholics are still having the word within the life, the social life of Congo, and I'm, sh I'm certain it's going to play a big role now that the Congo is moving to a phase of reconciliation. Well, how do you feel personally about uh, the fact that the Pope was unable to travel to Goma to meet with uh, uh, those uh, who are victims uh, of the civil war there in their native region? I think it's right for the Pope not to travel for security reasons. But I just felt sad, very sad that the Pope could not make it because everyone was expecting to to give a little comfort to these people that are still trapping in Eastern Congo. I personally think that it was right for the people to, to, for the Pope to come to Kinshasa. Also right that they could not make it for security reasons. I know there is a lot of disappointed people in Eastern Congo, but hopefully, uh, you know, a, 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 this presence of the Pope in the country might give a, 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 a measure of comfort to the population because they really need it at this moment. And uh, one final question, uh, the, uh, uh, you look at uh, how important this visit is uh, for the 45 million Catholic faithful that are estimated to be in, in Congo. How important is this visit for the Catholic Church itself? Very important, very comforting. Remember, before the, the, during the Joseph Kabila reign, Catholics were persecuted seriously. And I have to say, now that the Pope has come, he gives them a, a sort of comfort, and very importantly, that they have a leader who listens to them. They have a leader who comes to the rescue to comfort them. For the Catholic Church, it means the word. And it means the word for all Congolese. You know, the Pope, Pope Francis is quite a, 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 a Pope who astonished the world with his work in Argentina before becoming Pope. So he's, he's a figure of knowing the suffering of people. He has seen people suffering. He, he has being a side of people have been suffering. So it means the world for many Congolese, for the Catholics, even for me who's not in DRC. It made me feel, oh, finally, someone is bringing the tales of DRC around the world. Finally, someone who thinks about what the Pope is saying in DRC. Finally, we get a measure of attention that will be needed for more than 20 years. Deborah Kayembe, thank you so much for joining us from Edinburgh. Thank you so much.